This is Malasin. I met this woman in Myanmar on August 2016. In those days, Aung San Suu Kyi, state councillor of Myanmar, was celebrating an historical visit in Beijing after 30 years of political isolation. A major topic of this visit was climate change. Malasin didn't know about this political negotiation, but she explained to me that during the previous year, she left a wooden house near the Lemno River because of flooding. She told me it was because climate is changing. The feelings and understanding of Malasin about climate change intrigued me very much. When I came back home, I realized that Myanmar at the start suffering consequences from climate change, concerning with flooding, extreme weather events, and even reduction of food productivity. Malasin had experienced on her shoulders the meaning of the words climate change. I find it fascinating how popular culture embraces and adapts scientific words with lay imagination, spanning from popular science magazines to social networks, energy buzzwords become very popular. Let us have a look at some popular energy news headlines and some slogans. Renewable energy sources could take the world by storm. 1976, a 40-years-old prophecy. Two more. How hydrogen can save America and extracting fuel from thin air. Old and new fashionable options, but always the same big misunderstanding between energy resources and energy carriers. My favorite, a triumph of buzzwords. Smarter's way to green, how to make sustainability succeed in your business. The last one, towards a circular economy, a zero waste program for Europe. This is most more complex and needs further investigation. We will catch it later. A unique mixture of technical facts and ethical assertions hits our emotions and our imagination. As a result, our normal attitude is to wait for simple silver bullet solution that will solve our problem. This attitude not only relates with energy problems, but, but we may easily extend it to other challenges that humanity is facing. Global migration, the scarcity of resources like water and food, the ending of, of global poverty. Feelings and emotions seem to count, to count more than scientific fact. My point tonight is to think about some popular energy buzzwords. Buzzwords shape our thoughts and our imagination. Sometimes they create reality from meaningless. We will regain our freedom of choice only by looking for scientific-based facts. The energy challenge is a complex and multi-dimensional problem of our time. We live in a paradoxical situation where the major threats for our planet arise from our peaceful and normal living on it. On the one hand, energy is required to make possible humans' prosperity. On the other hand, energy misuse results in serious environmental trouble, determines socio-economic problems, and triggers geopolitical tensions. While the global average use of energy has tremendously increased in the last 50 years, people from sub-Saharan Africa still use the same quantity of energy as the Neolithic men. Around 3 billion people still cook and heat their houses by using solid fuels in open fires and leaky stoves. As a result, over 4 million die every year by breathing their released smoke. Considering the energy challenge only as an issue of technological obsolescence is our major failure. There are energy buzzwords that are able to capture this dramatic situation, while others sound just like slogans. We can identify two main categories. Those words that rely on a partial vision of our planet, where we behave like 
cowboys at the alleged conquest of El Dorado. Some magic formula, bio, clean, green, eco, and my favorite, energy democracy, invoke salvific energy revolutions, and mostly they confuse between means and ends. These words hardly rely on solid scientific background, and often they lead to a cliché that conforms, simplifies, and worse, they create fears on scientific subjects. We must avoid cultural polarization. We are talking about science and not about social things. We need instead to hold those concepts that rely on, uh, um, on, on, on strong scientific findings and offer a systemic and global picture of our planet, like an astronaut that looks at the whole Earth from space. This word, like circularity, resilience, sustainability, encourage the confluence of people, ideas, and intelligence. They are able to set what are the actual goals of our future and help finding practical solutions. They enable innovation. Circular economy is one of these words. It describes a systemic vision of economy that is able to recognize that the natural resources are not endless and there are many links between economic activities and natural ecosystems. Circular economy aims at the moderate use of energy and material resources through redesign, reduction and reuse. Therefore, it is opposed to the current linear or river economy that see the constant expansion as the fundamental goal. We can easily see the structural wastefulness of our economies from some example. In the mobility sector, we keep our cars parked 90% of the time and we drive alone for the rest of it. Moreover, the transport of people uses a very little fraction of the original energy of the fuel. Our food value chain wastes around 30% of it and even key, key uh, resources for its production like food and like water and nutrients. In addition, half of European population is overweight. Still, we live in very big inefficient houses, much bigger than we need, and we occupy our offices less than 40% of the time, even during working hours. This number represents a big amount of waste, but also an opportunity. Looking at material flows, only three of them, the one in yellow, have a recycling rate higher than 50%. While most of elements in the periodic table, the ones in white color, still do not enter any account statistic. The opportunity is particularly relevant if we add the energy cost savings from material recycling. Circular economy is a real thing. Although these good points and the sound scientific basis, the risk for circular economy to become a cliche is there. The risk is that anthropocentrism and the excessive trust in technology may divert its fundamental idea from reduction and rational use of resources to growth and recycle, pollute and after the pollute. This would be even more incompatible with the, with the physical boundaries of our planet. For instance, there is no circular energy concepts in physics. Every natural transformation is irreversible and brings the overall degradation of resources. Indeed, every recycling process requires a net input of energy, making the circle more like a spiral. Creation involves always a simultaneous destruction. Life brings always death. Therefore, under the, under the statement towards a circular economy, a zero waste program for Europe, we can, there is the message that we can reduce our wastes thanks to the concept of circular economy. On the other hand, science tells us that we cannot stop producing wastes at all. So the ones residues that are not in Europe will be disposed somewhere else. 
We need an inclusive vision of our planet to face the great challenges of our time. Only by understanding the true scales of our problems, we will enable an effective technology innovation. We must consider our life as the explorative mission of astronauts in space, able to keep a special and temporal breath. And our opportunity is to nourish life beyond our own. In some energy buzzwords, there is a whole ecosystem where innovation is possible. Consider them under a scientific point of view. Free your minds from emotion and false promises brought by slogan. We need a permanent education for that. Science will not cheat on us. Thank you very much for your attention.